It is not secret that the financial service sector is an important sector in economic terms for my country. Having said this, we need to take care in the present guidelines all of the sectors in order to ensure the best possible outcome. EU solidarity among the 27 is in the foundation on which the future framework will be built on. I consider that the interest of all member states with the UK are all of equal importance. There shall be no cherry picking which sector is more or less important in the framework for our future relation. Though we also have to recognize that some sectors because of the nature need a differentiated approach too. The principle of solidarity was the foundation of the April 2017 guidelines which stipulate already that the outcome of the negotiations must be fair and equitable for all member states in the interest of our citizens. We should keep in mind that tens of thousands of jobs are linked to the Brexit and depend on the future relations between the UK and the European Union. We always have to keep this also in mind. In that respect, we also need a smooth and trans transition and avoid all kinds of disruptions which could harm trade links which are beneficial to our people on both sides of the channel. That is why I often call Brexit a damage limitation exercise. The transition phase is important uh, to manage the exit of the UK also in technical terms. Another principle which is at the heart of our undertakings is respect of the level playing field to ensure the integrity of the internal market. Unfortunately, and we have to know, there will be no winners after the Brexit. Both sides will be losing, minimizing the losses and limiting the negative impacts as much as possible in the respect of the level playing of the international market is the challenge we all face around the table. The Luxembourg position on Brexit is pragmatic and pre-European. We will study the current set of guidelines which was issued a few hours uh, ago and solidarity is a key condition to ensure unity. And unity is the key condition to achieve a pragmatic result too. Financial services are a key interest of my country and we need to see in the weeks ahead how we best take care of them in the respect of the level playing field and the interest of business and people. I would not like to conclude my short statement without expressing my support in solidarity with Ireland. I visited this week also the Taoiseach in Dublin with the people on the island in order to ensure that their daily lives on the border between Northern Ireland and Ireland can continue in a smooth and frictionless way. Dear President, thank you very much and allow me also uh, to thank you for how we were able also to discuss about that the last uh, month since uh, the decision of the UK citizens. We deeply regret the decisions, but we have to respect it. And the most important part was that you were able, under your leadership, to keep the unity between the 27 other members. We just will be able to have, um, I wouldn't say, a hard Brexit, a soft Brexit, but an intelligent Brexit where we'll be able to find solutions to have a relationship with that country, but on a level playing field, unfair, without cherry picking, and especially without giving the impression to other EU citizens that to be outside is more interesting to be inside. As I said already before, we had a special relations with the UK. Before they were in with a lot of opt-outs. Now they are out and they want a lot of opt-ins. But I'm sure that you, under your leadership, uh, dear Donald, we will be able to, uh, to, to keep this unity. And so I really would like to thank you for being here today. And I'm impatient to have this exchange also with you during this uh, lunch meeting that uh, we will, will have. So, Jenkuye, for your work. Jenkuye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be back in, in Luxembourg. I'm very happy to be here with my colleague and good friend, Prime Minister Bettel, to discuss the agenda of the March European Council. Two hours ago, I sent the EU 27 member states my draft guidelines for our relations with the UK after Brexit. I am here in Luxembourg to consult the Prime Minister on these guidelines that I hope will be adopted at our European Council in March. 
And it is not a coincidence that once again I start my consultations ahead of European Council meeting here in Luxembourg with Prime Minister Bettel. I really value your advice, Xavier, you know it. Always very constructive and responsible. My proposal shows that we don't want to build a wall between the EU and Britain. On the contrary, the UK will be our closest neighbour and we want to remain friends and partners also after Brexit. Partners that are as close as possible, just like we have said from the very first day after the referendum. And in this spirit, I propose close cooperation within the following areas. Firstly, as we are confronted with similar security threats, I propose that the EU and the UK continue a common fight against terrorism and international crime. The global instability requires our uninterrupted cooperation in defence and foreign affairs. It is about the security of our citizens, which must be preserved beyond Brexit. Secondly, we invite the UK to participate in EU programs in the fields of research and innovation, as well as in education and culture. This is key to maintain mutually beneficial and enriching personal networks in these vital areas and for our community of values to prosper also in future. Thirdly, I am determined to avoid that particularly absurd consequence of Brexit that is the disruption of flights between the UK and the EU. To do so, we must start discussions on this issue as soon as possible. Now coming to the core of our future economic relationship. During my talks in London last Thursday and in her speech last Friday, Prime Minister Theresa May confirmed that the UK will leave the single market, leave the customs union and leave the jurisdiction of the ECJ. Therefore, it should come as no surprise that the only remaining possible model is a free trade agreement. I hope that it will be ambitious and advanced and we will do our best as we did with other partners such as Canada recently. But anyway, it will only be a trade agreement. I propose that we aim for a trade agreement covering all sectors and with zero tariffs on goods. Like other free trade agreements, it should address services. And in fisheries, reciprocal access to fishing waters and resources should be maintained. This positive approach doesn't change the simple fact that because of Brexit we will be drifting apart. In fact, this will be the first FTA in history that loosens economic ties instead of strengthening them. Our agreement will not make trade between the UK and the EU frictionless or smoother. It will make it more complicated and costly than today for all of us. This is the essence of Brexit. To sum up, we will enter the negotiations of the future relations with the UK with an open, positive and constructive mind, but also with realism. From my point of view, the outcome of the negotiations must pass two key tests. The test of balance of rights and obligations. For example, the EU cannot agree to grant the UK the rights of Norway with the obligations of Canada. The test of integrity of the single market. No member state is free to pick only those sectors of the single market it likes, nor to accept the role of the ECJ only when it suits their interest. By the same token, 
a pick and mix approach for a non-member state is out of the question. We are not going to sacrifice these principles. It's simply not in our interest. Finally, a few words about another topic of the March summit. Following the announcement of President Trump, there is a risk of a serious trade dispute between the United States and the rest of the world, including the EU. President Trump has recently said, and I quote, trade wars are good and easy to win. But the truth is quite the opposite. Trade wars are bad and easy to lose. For this reason, I strongly believe that now is the time for politicians on both sides of the Atlantic to act responsibly. Given that President Trump's announcement may have repercussions for our citizens and European businesses, not to mention the global economy, I will propose that the EU leaders have an extraordinary trade debate at the upcoming summit. We should have a clear objective in mind to keep world trade alive and, if necessary, to protect Europeans against trade turbulence, including by proportionate responses in accordance with the WTO. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam Fleming from the BBC. Um, President Tusk, you spoke to Mrs May last week. You read the speech. Do your guidelines come anywhere close to offering what she wants? And on this stuff about President Trump, does the departure of the UK from the EU make it harder for you to deal with issues like this? Um, Prime Minister Bettel, um, the scope in these guidelines for the UK to change its mind and get a different deal, would you urge the UK to drop its red lines? And also, you're a Prime Minister of a country, would you accept a deal like this if it was offered to you? In fact, our guidelines, if you allow me, in fact, our guidelines, uh, our comment on what Prime Minister Theresa May said in her speech last Friday, when it comes to substance. And of course it was the main reason of my visit to London to, to consult with Theresa May before we have prepared the final version of the draft of guidelines to hear her arguments. Mm. One thing must be absolutely clear, and I'm not sure that, that uh, we are on the same position here, and that uh, mm, there's no possibility to have a, you know, some sort of exclusive form of single market for some part of our economies. And I hope that during our negotiations and, and debates also among 27 EU leaders that we will make this our position more clear for our partners in, in, in London. There is also a you know, political context and I think it must be also absolutely clear for all the partners. I fully understand and, and, of course, I respect Theresa May's political objective to, to demonstrate at any price that Brexit could be a success and, and was the right choice. But sorry, it is not our objective, of course. As I told you, there will be no winners. and. Um, I'm very honest with you. When I listened to Theresa May's speech uh, the last uh, week, I didn't learn that much more than I knew before. So uh, I still need concrete 
point, because it's always a framework, but we are still in, in negotiations. I will, today I'm very uh, happy, and thank you so much for the, the compliment to start with uh, your, your, your visits uh, in, in Luxembourg and for the trust you have uh, in, um, in, in the relations that we have. Um, I, as I told you before, I met Tishok two days ago. He still has no answer about border questions. How will be the solution? Is really this USA-Canada model what they want, where he says this is unacceptable for us? Um, so I will have uh, the visit of uh, Prime Minister Sipila on Thursday. I will have the visit of Stéphane Leven on Friday. And I will have lunch with Theresa May next week in London. So for me it is important. I, 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 I'm very happy that we are able to exchange between colleagues. I had a lot of phone calls also this week and last week really to to try to understand also what will be the British position. Because for the moment, I'm very honest with you. It is not clear exactly what they want. And so I will try to get more information out next week when I'm in, uh, in, the, in the UK. But to, to give the impression that the UK will be the big winner of the Brexit, I told you before, there will be no winner. Nor them, nor us, neither us. So. And that I, 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 if they have red lines, but it's not uh, unilateral, it's negotiation. It's not that they decide and we accept. This is not how we negotiate. The fact is we are around the table and we have rules. And uh, I, uh, I, no cherry picking is, 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 is reality. And it's also, and, and if we would say now that Europe, it's just now about business and finances, just that, just that. We would not understand what our citizen wants because it's also freedom, liberty, freedom of move, freedom of goods and a whole aspect and not only businesses and how to be more successful in the economy. This would be, I think we started in 57 and I'm so, so, so sorry to tell that in presence of Donald. He comes from a country where they had not the liberty in 57 we had. And this is because of the European Union now, that we are able, even with, and I'm sorry to say that, to remember also values and human rights in some countries. And this is for me also one of the stones of the European Union, and not only business. There was a question also about Trump's announcement, and uh, of course uh, in the context of President Trump's announcement on, on trade, I have no doubt that we, I mean the UK and, and the EU, that we are still one team in, 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 in this context. And, uh, and Brexit has nothing to do with this uh, um, the obvious common idea that free trade is much better than protectionism. Maybe I am naive, but I don't think so. But just, I forgot, just, just to complete one point, what is very important also, it's not to want to have this, want to punish the UK. We respect the choice. And if we think now that we should punish them, this would be, again, to confirm the one who wear for the leaf, to say, if you do not agree with the elite, you get punished. But you should, we should have an in, not a hard Brexit, not a soft Brexit, but an intelligent Brexit. But again, there will be no winners. Maybe last question. Um, Prime Minister Bettel, as you told, Brexit is a big issue, but we heard yesterday that the Commission is now uh, striking against Luxembourg again on rulings. Uh, do you have a position on and, and that kind of uh, action of the Commission? Could it, is, is it a risk to the, of the solidarity that the uh, European Union needs right now? So I heard that also uh, in the news uh, yesterday and this morning about uh, Pierre Moscovici's statements about uh, seven or eight countries where he thinks they are not fair. I think the principle of the European Union is not to point out one country now against another. First thing, it would have been more opportune and I think more efficient to speak with the countries before and then uh, trying to, uh, to, to, to have an exchange on these different topics. I just can tell you, I'm Prime Minister for more than four years now. The last four years, we changed so many things in Luxembourg. Of exchange, under Luxembourgish presidency, we did the exchange of rulings, the exchange of informations. 
This was on the Luxembourgish presidency. We were taken out of all lists, grey lists, black lists, I don't know every colour you can imagine of lists existing in the world. And my problem is when we speak now about harmonisation, what is the idea about harmonisation? It's never to raise, to get down taxes. Never. It's always how we will raise taxes up. And I can tell you now, it's just the, the, the topic we had before, with the United States, who are getting down and down and down with taxes. To say that now all the European countries will have to raise up taxes, and also individual taxes, company taxes, all the taxes, I think we should not forget that thousands of jobs also are in Europe, and we might lose them if companies decided to move to the United States because they will be more efficient. So I would be happy if we would be able to discuss with the European Union and with the Commission especially, how we can be competitive also as European Union. And if there are rules, if we want to, to speak about minimum maximums, we are open to all the discussions. And I won't accept that the Commission wants to put my country in a corner now with, we were usually used to be alone. Now they found seven others to, 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 to put on that list. I really, I, I I cannot understand what's, uh, what is the goal of it, but so we will wait for the documents and the, the presentation. I think it's tomorrow or today that they will introduce uh, the paper, so at least to wait what they uh, really want. We will defend you, of course. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>